This is One on One. Welcome to One on One. He was with us, I don't know, 13, 14 years ago. He's been back many times since, and uh, we are honored to have him back in our studio. He's uh, Scott Chesney, president of the Raise Hope Foundation. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Man, a lot's happened. Um, <sighs> tell folks what the Raise Hope Foundation is, and then we'll do a little background on you. Absolutely. Raise Hope Foundation, a phenomenal organization that's about four years old now. We train, we mentor, and we place people with disabilities and American military veterans for rewarding careers in financial services. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that because of technological advances as well as accessibility advances, that a level playing field has been created. Not just in this industry, so many other industries. This is the one we're focusing on now. Um, but we have our uh, graduates now competing for great entry level and other level entry jobs in financial services with people who are able-bodied. And uh, they're doing phenomenal jobs. When we first met, do you, me you remember who brought us together? Who brought us together? I, a lot of people that I could possibly think main of. Guy. Huh? Oh, Who's main it? guy, Ray. Ray Chambers. Absolutely. An incredible philanthropist. Uh, but he's so much more than that. He's a great guy. He's working up at the UN right now. The best with, mentor uh, in the world. In Africa, malaria. Um, Ray Chambers said to me, I want you to meet Scott Chesney. And I go, the Scott Chesney? The Scott Chesney, you know? Because I remember when you were a kid. Give folks who don't know the short version what an incredible athlete you were growing up in Verona? In Verona, correct. You were, you were the, I was going to say what you were, but you can't say that on PBS. You were the, you were it, right? <laughs> and something happened to change your life. Tell Absolutely. folks. I had a, a very rare stroke. I, I was a three-sport athlete. And then on December 28th, 1985, I just woke up one morning and basically had a numb big toe, like when your foot falls asleep. And then 48 hours later, I was paralyzed from my belly button out of my toes. No accident, no injury, no trauma. It was a very rare stroke that I could have gotten my whole life with anything happening, but it was my time. It was my time. Yeah, we used to say it like that as if, you know, it was my time. <laughs> uh, and, and I remember we talked, I'm not, some, I'm not sure how many years after that, but what always struck me about you and what continues to strike me about you today, and we'll talk about the foundation, the work you're doing, has always been your attitude. Describe it. Where the heck does it come from? And how do you help other people with theirs? Absolutely, absolutely. Attitude, it's your energy each day. It's almost like the gasoline in a car. And I feel that truly, that's the only place I could disable myself. And I know that people who are able-bodied are disabling themselves constantly through having a negative attitude. Uh, I've gotten to the point, Stephen, it's taken a lot of work, and it's work that I love sharing with others, is that I refuse to have bad days anymore. I don't have bad days anymore. I have challenging moments. Mm. I have sad moments. I have painful moments. But based on this thing called gratitude, <laughs> mm. I will never allow myself to have a full day in which I call it a bad day. So there's the challenging moments, the ones that I learn so much about myself and other people through, um, my moments of sadness. I, I live every day with some sort of pain in my legs still. But everything I realize has a message in it and a lesson that can be learned and something that can be shared with others. And knowing full well that that still continues to be my purpose each and every day is to serve others. That helps me to have that attitude each and every day in which I see it full of abundance. I see it full of, of, of gratitude. Talk about the foundation because also the, the connection now. We have two. It's so interesting how uh, the world, through the relationships you have, bring you back to your friends. The Race Hope Foundation, it got brought up to us through our friends at the Kessler Foundation, yes. but also, also through our partners at Investors. Yes. Make all those connections for us. Absolutely. Well, we can begin with Investors, and Investor Bank is one of our top sponsors. Kevin we just Cummings, honored, right? We just honored Kevin Cummings with the Raise Hope Leadership Award at our annual Joe Piscopo event. Joe's our other good friend. Another good friend. He's on our board of trustees. And so we honored Kevin with our first award based on the work he's done with people with disabilities as well as uh, veterans. And we said, That's listen. That's a picture of uh, Kevin right there. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Um, just a phenomenal individual who wants to put the best people in place in his company. And he's got such a culture there that he's built. And it includes people with disabilities. And it includes veterans. And he realizes that there's an enormous pool of talent with both of these demographics. 
and which are connected as well. And that's why we decided not to just include veterans with disabilities, but now we've expanded thanks to a, a board that has challenged us. We are now including all veterans because whether it be the having to overcome adversity, the time management, the adjusting to life's changes in um, a different way than I think a, a lot of other people, is that we feel that by including both of these demographics in our mission, we're really serving two of our uh, populations that are underserved, under, uh, uh, not employed to the degree they should be. Uh, Kessler Foundation, who does so much to help um, with regards to rehabilitative research, people with disabilities, they do so much for employment issues for people with disabilities. Uh, I'm actually one of their ambassadors. They, right away, when we went to them very early on at Raise Hope Foundation, they were very very generous to us in giving us a grant and understanding that you know this relationship is going to build and prosper and what we've done which Kessler loves so much is that we form partnerships with other organizations we for decide example. I'm sorry for example for example we have the Center for Financial Training um, we have our Financial Services Academy for that vets? we do um, for veterans and also people with disabilities we do this out of Rutgers Business School. They've been very generous. Another partner of ours is that they've provided us free of charge with an accessible classroom there. So basically- Why is that so important? I'm sorry? Why is that so important? The accessibility for, obviously you could do training online, you could do any type of training, but there's something to be said for that social interaction. What we're having now, Steve, it's very important, I think with everyone, but with people with disabilities because of technology, and I'm generalizing here is that we've isolated ourselves. We don't have to leave our homes to do anything. And you know the importance, being the communication guru that you are, is that you know the importance guru of- Guru is going too far. No, 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 <laughs> you're my guru, is to have the connection that we're having face to face. So we have that training that's being done at Rutgers Business School for our Financial Services mm. Academy, which is Center for Financial Training. Now, the banking industry, which is our sweet spot now in terms of placing people, and that's why investors is so important and others. But, but it, what do they actually learn in terms of skills and tools that helps them in their lives to be more gainfully employed, to be the kind of citizens that they want to be, that we all want them to be. What are they actually taking away from it? Well, it, with regards to the Financial Service Academy, that's one portion of the right. training. They're learning how to be bank tellers, customer service reps, sales representatives. Now that's- uh, To get jobs. To get jobs, to get jobs. But the Center for Financial Training uh, has been working for decades now in the banking industry providing additional training. The banking industry provides more additional training than any other industry. They turn to the Center for Financial Training. We approached the Center for Financial Training. They've had people go come through their training classes who've had disabilities but never really focused on that segment of the population. So right away they were on board. We met with some banks and what exactly are you looking for? So we customized a program that the Center for Financial Training runs at Rutgers Business School. But Steve, we combined that training. When the founding fathers of Ray's Hope Foundation first approached me about being their president, I said, this is great, and I could absolutely see, having spoken to many people in the financial services industry over the years, we need work-life balance skills training. What does that mean? Is that the majority of people with disabilities have never, and I'm generalizing here, but have never worked a part-time or a full-time job and managed uh, their disability at the same time. It's very time-consuming to live life from a wheelchair, to live life with a disability, whether it be a physical disability or a mental disability. Now combine that into a day with a full-time or a part-time job, it's very overwhelming. So I get to head up that training. I've been doing that with people who have disabilities and people who are able-bodied for many years now. I said, I'd love to do this training myself. So one day a week, they're basically at uh, Rutgers Business School. Um, one day a week for just an hour. They're oh, on is a that your graduating class? Will That's come? our graduating class, yeah. Great what happens after they graduate, by the way? Right now, they're going through interviews. They're going through a bunch of interviews. Job interviews? Job interviews for either full-time or part-time uh, uh, employment. And we're trying to, which is uh, the key here, is some of them don't, can't drive a car. So transportation issues, we're trying to strategically place them within a certain mile radius of their home. So again, they could have that work-life balance. But we have some who've graduated who, you know what, will we'll drive in a car anywhere and are hungry and are going on various interviews as we speak. So um, we're excited. You love this work? I, I love this work with a passion, Steve. Everything that I do, I'm passionate about. But to help my extended brothers and sisters who have disabilities is so rewarding. Um, I, I knew this from the very beginning, but I was reminded of it, not this past graduating class, but the one before it, in which there was a gentleman who interviewed a Boiling Springs uh, savings bank. And he ended up getting a job offer. 
and he called me up and he thanked me and he said, Scott, do you know with what they offered me, now this is a 33 year old gentleman who's never worked, has the capabilities, has the talent, was an aspiring actor. He said, Scott, with what they're willing to pay me, which includes almost like overtime from the very beginning, I'm gonna more than quadruple what I was making on social security disability. See, it's just almost like now, I just started to cry. I can't even like imagine something like that. He said, thank you. And he was thanking the whole organization, but I, I brought him back to speak to our graduating class. And I said, this is why right. this works. This is why you've made this commitment. This is why you have to be patient now in this interviewing process to get jobs. It's good stuff. And I'm so glad we had our friend, uh, Scott Chesney, the president of the Rays. Hope Foundation, who uh, always comes here and not only raises hope, but provides wisdom and always a positive attitude. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Keep it up. Stay with us. This is One on One. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, Kessler Foundation, Investors Bank, Johnson & Johnson. AmeriHealth Caritas, parent company of Perform Care, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.